Well, good morning. morning. A huge shout out to those of you in our sanctuary. You're looking good this morning on Christmas Sunday. Come on now. Now, how do you guys know they're looking good? Uh, A huge welcome to you. And to all of you who are watching online, so grateful that you're uh, with us today. I want to invite you to open up your Bibles, please, and I'll meet you in the book of Micah. The book of Micah, we already read a verse from there today. As our Advent candle was lit, uh, Micah uh, chapter 7 is where I'll meet you. As you're kind of getting situated, I want to uh, pause for just a very brief moment. Uh, We have been blessed at our church to have a multilingual congregation. And uh, for the past 10 years, Pastor David Hernandez has been leading our Spanish-speaking service, and he is just an incredible leader and teacher and pastor and equipper. And um, over the course of the last year and a half or so, the Lord has been opening up some doors for him uh, that we have been praying about and thinking about and um, asking God for discernment about. And the door has been completely blown off, and we see the hand of God in this. And so Pastor David has um, announced that he is going to transition out of the uh, lead role in our Spanish ministry and dedicate his talents to equipping pastors uh, in Latin American countries. Um, And I don't have the time this morning to tell you this story. But it is amazing, and it is ridiculous how God has opened this door. So, if you know Pastor David, uh, he will be here for a couple months at least as we work through a transition, Um, but we wanted you to know that um, that we're excited and we're sad at the same time uh, to see him uh, leave us, but to go into this open door that God has opened for him is absolutely remarkable. If you know David well, you know that he is an incredible teacher and equipper of people and pastors, and uh, God has laid out a vision for him to train thousands and thousands of pastors uh, in Latin America, so we are super excited about that. Would you just give God a praise for that? And... um, So excited. Don't you love it when you give a gift to someone and it's exactly what they want? Have you ever ever had that happen to you where you, you know what that person wants and maybe they don't know that you know what they want and you maybe it's an expensive gift, maybe not. But if it's an expensive one, you've decided to save and, and you, you buy that gift and you don't tell them, of course, and they're quasi-depressed because they can't imagine anybody would actually buy this particular gift for them. And you're just, you can't wait for Christmas morning, not because of what you're getting, but because of what you're, you're giving, right? You've been in that situation and the person opens up the gift and they are just, Wow. And you're like the hero of the day. I know Jesus is supposed to be the hero on Christmas, but. Um, And and why? Why are they so excited? Well, it's because it's exactly what they wanted. And they didn't think anybody was going to get it for them, but you you came through for them. Well, this morning, I want to remind you, here in the ministry center and over in the sanctuary and listening online, I want to remind you of something that God wants from you. God has a Christmas list. You have, you have other people in your life that you ask, what do you want for Christmas? And they just don't ever tell you anything. And you're left to kind of wonder, what am I supposed to get this person? Well, I want to talk to you this morning about God's Christmas list. And the good news is that you don't have to jump on Amazon before the service is out and order it. You actually came in with it. And my prayer, honestly, this morning is that before you leave our campus or you leave wherever you are watching online, 
that the power of the Holy Spirit would remove whatever barriers might be in the way of you wrapping that gift up and making the exchange with God. We're in this series called The Great Exchange. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's a great exchange. And my prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit will enable you, empower you, equip you, inspire you um, to wrap that gift up that God so desperately wants. I just wish that you and I could have this picture of God, of a God who absolutely loves to show you mercy. That this exchange we've been talking about It brings him the greatest of joys when you respond to his invitation to come and to give him a gift. When you exchange, we've been talking about our sin and our shame and our doubt and our insecurity and our confusion and our anger and our selfishness. And when we bring that and we exchange it for what God has for us, it brings him great delight. I wish that Somehow, some way, this morning, you would come to a deeper understanding of God's great mercy for you. That He is for you and not against you. And that He desperately is wanting you to bring Him a gift this morning. And in fact, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of the service to present Him with a gift. So get ready. Turn to the person next to you and say, get ready. Now, Micah chapter 7, this is a one-verse sermon, and uh, if you believe me when I say that, when I start a sermon, you haven't been here very long. But I want to look at this verse with you, this wonderful, powerful verse um, in Micah chapter 7, verse 18. Micah chapter 7, verse 18. Are you there? Who is a God like you? who pardons sin and forgives the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but you what? Talk to me, family. You what? You delight to show mercy. The International Children's Bible reads this way. There is no God like you You forgive people who are guilty of sin. You don't look at the sins of your people who are left alive. You, Lord, will not stay angry forever. You enjoy being kind. So good. The Amplified Version. Who is a God like you who forgives wickedness and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he constantly delights in mercy and loving kindness. This is the word God gave for me to give to you today. That God loves to receive your junk. That God is waiting for you this morning to wrap it up and bring it to him. For some reason, we have this idea that God delights when we have everything together. That God is pleased and and, and it's the greatest joy when you come to church and you are looking all good and I'm glad you showered today and you dressed up. I'm, I'm grateful for all that. But we translate that into, oh, God must be really pleased because I'm looking really good today. And the fact of the matter is, is that God gets the most joy when you bring just what you have. He's not impressed with what you bring to show other people. Come on now. Turn the person next to you. It's Christmas Sunday. He, he, he brings, it brings him the greatest delight when you bring to him just the stuff that you have and that you are. He wants you to come to him just like you are. And that's why you don't have to worry about getting on Amazon before the service is over to wrap something up for him. Because you already have it present. He just wants what you already have. I'm a church boy. I grew up in church. We used to sing this 
really old song. Just as I am without one. Okay, there's two of you that grew up in church. (laughs) But that that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. That's how I want you. Just as I am. He came to this earth and lived a sinless life to go to the cross to pay for your sin. He came to care for your junk. So when you withhold your junk from him, it doesn't bring him great joy. But when you bring your junk to him, your sin, your shame, your guilt, your mistakes, your anxieties, your dreams, your disappointments, when you bring all of that to him, it brings him great joy because that's why he came. Emmanuel, God, with us. And, and somehow, some way, we have to wait. And I already know you're feeling this tension in the room. Like, I'm this Billy John. You're going to give me an opportunity to wrap it up and give it to God this morning. Yes, I am. And, and you already have this tension in you because you're, 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 you're a little afraid to do that. It's, you're kind of going to do it begrudgingly. And, and I just. Something that God wants from you. Did you know, by the way, that the English word surrender is really n- not in your Bible? Ooh. The concept is certainly there, but the, the actual English word doesn't show up in very many English translations. Um, the English word surrender, if you look it up in the dictionary, says this. To surrender means to give something that is yours to someone else because you have been forced to do so or because it is necessary to do so. Illustration, por ejemplo. Uh, That means, for example, in Spanish, by the way. Uh, The police, haha, you knew this, right? The police demanded that the gang surrender their weapons. Make sense? Um, I'd ask for a testimony at this point of the word surrender in your lives, but I'm not sure I want to open up the mic to that. Right? Neither side is willing to surrender any territory of their, uh, of their claims. Right? So it's this idea, and it's the reason why when we talk about surrender in a worship context like this or a biblical context, it has all these negative connotations. Surrender means I got caught. I got chased down. I think of surrender mostly with regards to police officers chasing me down and giving me a ticket. But the biblical concept of surrender has more to do with John agreeing with God about this gift that he wants me to bring to him. God is a kind and gracious God. God, Micah 7 verse 18 says, delights in showing mercy. God gets a kick out of Showing you grace and love and mercy when you bring him your stuff. When you surrender to him. Which means when you agree with him about what it is that he's asking you to bring to him. In my mind, the first step to surrender, at least in a biblical sense, is to agree with God about something. So when I surrender my life to Jesus, we use all these these wonderfully well-used words. Give your life to Christ. Surrender your life to Christ. Well, John, what does that mean? It means when I surrender my life to Christ or I give my life to Jesus, it means I'm agreeing with him that his way is the true way and the only way to eternal life. Come on, somebody shout amen. 
When I surrender my guilt and my shame to Jesus, I'm agreeing with him that he has a solution to care for my sin. It's called forgiveness. When, when I agree, when I surrender my past to him, right, I'm agreeing with him that my life is not determined by what I have done in the past, but my life is determined by the gift of Jesus Christ coming to earth, living a sinless life, and dying on a cross to pay the penalty for my sin. Right? So it's an agreement to surrender is to agree with God that His way is better than my way. That His way is sufficient and my way is not sufficient. So, so really, surrender should be this wonderful experience at the end of this service where we're jumping up out of our chairs and we're celebrating and we're laughing and we're dancing and we're doing the jig and we're doing the Christmas jingle. Why? Okay, I'm talking to you online right now. Why? Because... Because we get to take our sin and exchange it for His mercy and His love. And when we do that, it brings Him great delight. He delights, Micah says. He enjoys, Micah says. Micah says that He gets the greatest joy showing us mercy and kindness and love, and forgiveness. And here's the deal. Here's the amazing thing. If that's not incredible enough, the incredible thing about God is that when you bring Him your stuff, your sin, your shame, your guilt, your disappointment, your loneliness, your anxiety, your broken relationships, your past mistakes, your regrets. When you bring him those things, he can't help but give you something in return. Who? Let me say that again because there's only one person excited about it over here on my right. <laughs> you ever had somebody come over to your house and they brought a gift. Um, I don't know, in this, uh, I was born and raised in a different culture, and so I've kind of learned this in the American culture, but if, if somebody brings you a gift, they're coming to your house maybe for dinner or something, and not a, not a huge occasion, but they, they bring a plant or something like that, and, and I've been in a couple situations where that's happened, and I must have missed the memo because clearly I should have had a gift for you as well. You ever been in that situation where somebody brought you a gift, but you didn't have a gift for them? And so you do the high sign in my family with the wife, and uh, one of us scrambles to the closet. <laughs> and in the closet, there are various and sundry things that are predetermined for these kinds of occasions. And you hope and pray that there's something in the closet that at least is of equal value or meaning to what this person just... Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody this morning. So you scrambling, you scrambling, you get a bow out, and, you, and, and then you, you, know, you, 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 you got to do it stealthy. You can't be all, like, obvious about it, you know? And it, it basically, it makes its way out to the front room so that on their way out, you, you know, you give them a gift. Come on now, somebody say Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not the only one who's done this. I know that in the room. You guys just ain't being honest with me. Well, here's the wonderful, incredible thing about God. When you bring him, when you bring him your gift, he doesn't have to scramble. He has to, go to, he has to, go to run to the closet, find something to give to you. In exchange for your sin, in exchange for your brokenness, he has a gift for you this morning. I, I don't know for you specifically what that is. I think about these gifts that God has for each one of us this morning in kind of maybe three categories. He has a, a gift uh, for my past, and he has a gift for my present, and he has a gift for my future. He may give you all three this morning. I don't know. Um. As I was reflecting on this, 
He gives me salvation. He gives me salvation. When I come to him and I admit my, my sinfulness and my brokenness, he gives me salvation. This is a gift from my past. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says it um, most, most clearly. Um, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. When you bring your sin, he exchanges that for salvation. You think about all the things that you've done in the past that have not brought him glory, that have not reflected his character, that have not reflected his kindness. And you bring that to him this morning. He exchanges that for salvation, for forgiveness. John chapter 14, verse 7, says that he gives me peace. John chapter 14, uh, verse 27, Jesus talking with his disciples. John chapter 15, verse, John chapter 14, verse 27, excuse me. Peace I leave with you, and my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives, but do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This in the context of Jesus talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit. He gives me a gift for the present, the gift of his peace, the gift of the Holy Spirit inside of me. He gives me a gift for my future. He gives me eternal life. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 is a familiar verse to maybe many of us, but it's worth repeating again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has a gift for you this morning. And it's not like he's scrambling in the house to go find it. He actually knows exactly what it is. All he wants to do is he wants to exchange. But you have to be willing to bring him what he so desperately wants. Isn't this crazy? Isn't this a crazy exchange? He desperately wants what he knows you need to give. And he he has something that you desperately need. So the ball's in your court. And this is the crazy thing is, We have such a hard time bringing it to God. Like, why? He wants it. He put it on his list. He came from heaven to earth to care for it. He died. He was buried. He resurrected again. He sent the Holy Spirit. Like, he's completely paved the way. How much more can he do and say that will enable you, empower you, equip you, inspire you to actually get up out of your chair this morning and give him what he wants? Because what he wants, you know you don't want, but you won't let it go. You won't agree with him that it's better for him to take it than you. That's why you go fishing with all your crap. Then you reel it back in. So I want to invite you this morning. I want to invite you to give God a gift. To come as you are and to surrender what you have. I'm going to lead you now in a, in a response time. I want to invite you to um, close your eyes and to take a deep breath in with me. One, two, three, in. Hold it. And let it out. I'm confident that already in this service, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you, whispering to you, nudging you about something that is on God's Christmas list that he wants specifically from you. If you're listening online, I want to invite you to to stay engaged right now in this portion of the service. What is it that God is, 
is leading you, guiding you, talking to you about. Maybe it's something in the past. Maybe it's something in the present. Maybe it's something in the future that you're anxious about, that you're hurting about. And he knows what that is, and you know what that is, and he's, he's waiting. He's waiting to open up that gift and to have this incredible smile on his face. If you're in the sanctuary in just a minute or two, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to turn the service over there in the sanctuary to, to Mark to lead you in a time of a practical response. If you're here in the house after I pray, I'm going to invite you to, um, to wrap that gift up and, and to give it to God. But just right now, for, for all of us listening, what is it that the Holy Spirit is bringing to your mind right now and to your heart? He's a God of all comfort. He's invited you to cast, to lay down your cares on Him. He's created a a, a space and a relationship for you to turn and complain and ask and trust. And now on this Christmas Sunday, He's asking you to surrender, to to take a a practical step of agreeing with Him and to experience the joy of seeing your Savior, your Father in heaven. Open up that gift and delight in showing you mercy. So just in the quietness of your own heart, your own mind, your own soul, your own spirit, there's something that the Holy Spirit is prompting you to wrap up right now and to present to the Savior. As the Holy Spirit brings that to your mind, I want to encourage you right now in this moment to to put some concreteness to it and to have the boldness and the courage to articulate in your mind uh, the, the words that come to mind that describe this situation, this circumstance, this person, this event, this this past trauma or present trauma or future anxiety. We talked about this last week, the importance of coming into his presence and turning to him and complaining and using language of of real bold frankness with God. It's hurtful. It's stressful. It's confusing. I want to give you a a moment this morning to to just process that with the Holy Spirit before I ask you to wrap it up and actually present it to God. Is there something in your past that has kept you from really following God and Trusting Him. Is there a circumstance or a relationship in the present that is just so burdensome that you you can't seem to kind of get it off you and to get, get beyond it to what God is calling you to do?
Or, or, or is there something in the future, a, a, a dream you have or an aspiration you have or something that you just desperately wanted to do and, and just doesn't seem to be kind of coming together and you, you, just, you just want to kind of take control of it again and, and disagree with God that, that he's better than you are at this. And right now the Holy Spirit is just asking you to agree that his way is better than your way. If you're listening in wherever you're listening today and you've never really received the gift of forgiveness in Jesus Christ, then today is your day. I want to specifically talk to you before I say amen to this prayer and, and uh, turn the service back over to Mark in the other sanctuary. But if you're here today and you're listening and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, God loved you so much. This is what Christmas is. He loved you so much that he, he left heaven and came down to be with us, to walk with us, not just to care about us, but to care for us. Emmanuel, he brings hope and peace and love and forgiveness. And he exchanges your sin for his righteousness. This is the best exchange one could ever desire. And if you're, you're here and you're listening and you've never yet done that, I want to invite you to do that right now. I want you to invite you to make this exchange with God. You do that by simply expressing to him, by agreeing with him that he loves you deeply that you can't possibly care for your own sin on, by yourself, but that he gave his life, he shed his blood to pay the penalty for your sin. And by placing your faith and trust in him and in him alone, you can be saved and have eternal life. We like to talk about it at Grace Church uh, uh, in the ABCs. Admit you're a sinner believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and choose to follow Him. God, thank You for the great exchange. Thank You for the joy and delight that You have when we bring our sin and our brokenness and our disappointments and our failures to You. We are we don't understand fully why it brings you so much delight and so much joy to receive so much junk. But who is a God like you? There is no one like you. And so we pray this morning, God, I pray this morning for these next moments of response that heaven would be full of all kinds of heartaches and troubles and anxieties and Gifts that none of us want, but that they bring you great joy. And in response, God, we know that you have something very specific to give to each and every person this morning. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray over this exchange now. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people said, amen. I want to invite you to stand if you're in the house here. If you're watching at home, uh, you can stand as well. We're going to sing a little bit. And I've been just thinking and praying about how I might encourage you with a practical step of surrender. Like, what would it look like for you today to practically, physically demonstrate that you are agreeing with God about that one thing that the Holy Spirit's been whispering in your ear? Like, what would that look like? Should I call you down front? Uh, sh should we, you know, raise our hands or, or whatever? And, and here's what I've decided. You may not like it. I love you. Do you know that there's no candle, Kim, there's no Advent candle, Pastor Kim, 
that's called surrender. There should be. Because until you agree with God, it's going to be very difficult for you to receive all that he has for you. Ooh, that's good. Fire marshal told me I couldn't light candles this morning. How many of you have a phone, a smartphone on you? Oh, come on, you all have a smartphone on you. I want you to take your phone out and while we sing this next song, don't do this because you're at some concert and you want to be like, I just wonder when you're ready, when you're ready, when the Holy Spirit has clearly spoken to you and you're ready to actually agree with God, you're actually willing to surrender that. While we sing this, this next song, I'm going to invite you to just take that phone and, and uh, turn the flashlight on it. And just, you don't need to show anybody else, just show God. God, I'm agreeing with you this morning. I'm agreeing with you. And I know right now that that you delight. It brings you great joy to receive my, my gift of brokenness and to get something in exchange from you. God, as we sing these next couple songs, we pray that your, your place of dwelling would be lit up with our gifts of shame and guilt and frustration and anxiety and loneliness and depression and, and dreams and visions that we would agree with you and in exchange for that God you would open up the heavens and speak and give something very specific to each and every person who is a God like you who pardons sins and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but you delight. It brings you great joy to show mercy.